Hi, I'm Jenny Rushmore of Kashmirat, and today I'm excited to take you through how to sew the Elmley sheath dress from beginning until the end. So the Elmley sheath dress is the final pattern in my book, Sewing the Curve, which is all about learning to sew clothes for your curvy figure. The great thing about the Elmley is that it's a sheath dress that's actually designed for curves. It comes in sizes 12 to 32 US and cup sizes C to H. And I really designed it to look fantastic on a curvy body, um, but also be more challenging to sew than the other things in the book, but totally doable even if you're a beginner. So let's take a look at the Elmley. So first let's take a look at view A. So view A is really the classic sleeveless sheath dress you probably think of when someone says the word sheath dress. So here are some of the features. It is fully lined, and I'm gonna show you how to do a beautiful clean lining. And what that means is that on the outside, there's no stitching. It just perfectly ends in a clean edge here. Um, I also show you how to do a clean finish on the zipper, which is a really great skill to know. So it's got this nice round neckline, it is sleeveless, we have bust darts, and then we have these fish eye darts, which are basically a combination of waist darts going up to the bust and then going down from the waist and down. So they're not that hard to sew. You'll learn all about how to do it. On the back, we have more fisheye darts and you will be inserting your first invisible zip. Invisible because on the outside, you can't see there's a zip there. It just looks like a seam. And it is a really, really beautiful finish. So. By the end of this sew along, you will know how to make this view A dress, but there's more. So we also have a view B. So view B is fundamentally the same as view A, but it has these sleeves. So these are flutter sleeves. They're also sometimes called trumpet sleeves. Um, and basically, yeah, they give you this kind of like fluttery full sleeve. This is a brocade, so they're kind of sticking out more, but if you use a lighter fabric, they will kind of fall down in sort of a more of a flowy fashion. But apart from that, view A and view B are the same. So in this sew along, I'm gonna be teaching you how to sew bust darts and how to sew fish eye darts, how to add a lining, how to insert an invisible zipper, how to finish armholes with a bias facing, that's on view A, how to insert a sleeve using the flat method, that's in view B, and we'll also cover hemming wovens. Now, before you start, you need to ascertain your size. So in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is measure yourself. So if you have a copy of Sewing the Curve, check it out. There's a whole section in how to measure yourself. And if you don't, head over to our website at kashmirat.com forward slash sizing, where you will find a full a guide to how to measure yourself. You will also find there our size calculator. So this is something unique to Cashmeret. We actually developed a calculator where you can insert your bra cup size, your high bust, full bust, waist and hip size, and we will tell you what size to make. So that is by far the easiest way to go about it. And that's what I recommend trying. Now, one thing is that the sizing calculator might tell you that you need to grade between sizes. And that's an incredibly common thing. Actually, about 80% of people need to do it. And that's if, let's say, like me, your bust and your waist and your hip are in different sizes. So I'm more or less like an 18 bust, an 18 to 20 waist, but like a 14 to 16 hip. If the sizing calculator tells you you need to do that, do not fear. We have a guide to how to grade between sizes. Again, you can look at sewing the curve if you have a copy, but you can also go to cashmeret.com forward slash grading, where we also explain it in more detail. Okay, so now let's talk about fabrics. So you need two different fabrics, one for the outside of the dress, which is called the shell, and one for the inside, which is called the lining. So for the outside, there's actually so many opportunities with the Elmley because it really will suit almost any light to midweight woven. So you can think of cotton or linen or wool or jacquard. Here are just a few of the things that would work that I just got out of my stash. So this is a wool, I think it's a wool blend. You can see the kind of texture here. And this would make such a nice kind of like traditional sheath dress that has the plaid look to it. Over here, I have um, a satin. Um, I think this is a poly satin. Again, it's got this big, bold uh, floral pattern. This would just make a beautiful one. And I will say, 
You don't want to use heavy fabric, that won't work. But this kind of mid-weight fabric that you can see has a bit of, has a bit of heft to it. This will actually make a really, really nice looking Elmley. Anything that's much thinner is, it's harder to make it look really good, but something with a little bit of heft is actually a really good bet. And on that note, I am a really big fan of brocades and jacquards. So I showed you that View B dress. That is made out of brocade. And this is another version of brocade or jacquard. And basically, I don't actually know what the technical definition of these are, but they're woven with like a heavy texture. They're often metallic and there's differing textures in them. And this kind of fabric works really, really well for like a kind of glitzy, more evening Elmley dress. So many, many options for the outside. For the lining, um, you do want to use lightweight fabric. Now, the ideal fabric to use is a bit slippery but that does make it harder to sew. So you kind of want to get something in the middle. Um, there are different kinds of fabric that are sold as lining. So sometimes you can simply buy lining. That will be totally fine. Um, one common type that you hear about is called Bemberg and we use Bemberg lining a lot. Um, this one, I'm just having a look because the label's still on it. So this is um, polyester satin. This is actually a really nice one because it's not super thin, which means it's going to be easier to um, sew with, but it's still going to give you the slip you need. And the reason you want a slightly slippery one is because it lets the um, lining move against your body rather than catching on the shell on the outside. So it's just an important kind of consideration. Um, this is a sand washed silk. Um, so this would also work really, really nicely. And in fact, I think we use this to line the pink dress that you saw there. And you can also use actual silk. So if you decide you're gonna like level up your skills and you wanna really go for gold, this is a silk. Um, I think it's a silk crepe de chine. This would also work well, but I would say, don't make your first one with a silk because it is a bit harder to sew. Something like, this polyester satin or a um, Bemberg lining would be ideal. So beyond the fabric, there are some notions you're gonna need. So the first thing that's most important is the 22 inch invisible zipper. So there are two different types of zipper. One is just called regular usually, and the other is called invisible. And what makes it invisible is that the teeth, so you can see the teeth on this side, they don't show on the outside. So you actually sew all the way up to the edge and when it's inserted, you can't see it. So you want the invisible zip to coordinate with the color of your fabric and if anything, be a little bit darker. So if you can't find an exact ma match, try and pick something that maybe would look like your fabric in a shadow because that way it's most likely to just disappear. If you really can't find a match at all, often like a gray is a good solution or a cream color. Um, you just want something that if you don't sew the zip perfectly, which you know, most people aren't going to, that it isn't like jumping out at you. So for instance, like if you use the hot pink invisible zip in a black dress, anytime the seam came even slightly apart, you would see the hot pink. So you want something that's coordinated as much as possible. And you can do the same thing when you're thinking about your thread. You want to have a tailor's ham like this, which is used for pressing um, darts, but you can also use a rolled up towel. So you literally just roll it up in a log and then bend it in half, that will work. You want a point turner or a knitting needle. So this is to turn out the corners after you sew the, um, the back where the zip is. Um, so this is an actual point turner, which works really well, but you can also use a knitting needle or Last resort, you can use the um, closed end of scissors. You do have to be careful you don't poke them through, but I have definitely done that before. Um, if you're making view B, you're gonna need a hand needle and some thread because we're going to do a little bit of hand finishing on the lining. And then finally, if you have it off your machine, a zipper foot, and this is the zipper foot here, is incredibly helpful for sewing the zipper on. You can do it without one, but I wouldn't really advise it. A zipper foot really is a very, very basic thing that you want with your sewing machine. So I would suggest if you don't already have one, you buy one and make it work on your machine before you start sewing your Elmley. So now you've figured out what size you are and you have your fabric and your notions, you need to prepare your pattern pieces. So the Elmley dress in Sewing the Curve comes in two different formats. The first one is a printed format in the back of the book. So if you do that, you're gonna to need to use tracing paper and trace off the pieces and cut them out first. You can't just cut them straight out of the book because the patterns are printed on two sides. There's more guidance on how to do this in the book. Alternatively, 
you can download the PDF patterns. So go to the back page, the inside back page where the boxes of the patterns, and there's a guidance on where to go to download those um, files. Once you've downloaded them, you can either print them at home on A4 or letter sized paper, and then tape them together. Again, there's information on how to do that in the book, or you can download the A0 size files and send them to a copy shop to be printed for you. Now, once you have them, they'll look like this. So this is what it would look like if you had it printed at a copy shop because it's not taped together. Um, <laughs> ignore the random line through the middle here because this is a used piece. So there are actually only five pieces in this whole pattern. So it's actually quite simple despite what you might think, but, or you're only gonna use five pieces. There are different front pieces for the different cup sizes. So this is a CD cup, so it's 1A. 1B is the EF cup and 1C is the GH cup. So we have the front piece here. We have the bust dart, the fisheye dart. You place it on the fold here to cut it. Um, and then we have a lengthen or shorten line here. So if you need to lengthen or shorten after you make your muslin, which we'll get onto that in a minute, this is the first place that we would recommend doing it. So that's the front. We then have the back piece that looks very similar. Um, it has a fisheye dart again. And just to note, the front is cut on the fold, so you can flip the piece over if you're cutting on flat fabric, but the back is not. It actually has a curved back seam because most people's backs are pretty curved. So this is the grain line. So this is the line you need to make sure is lining up with the grain of your fabric when you cut it. So there are also front and back lining pieces, which look almost identical to this, but are in fact slightly different um, because of the way that linings have to be drafted. So there's two more pieces that look like this, but are slightly different. If you're cutting view A, then you also have the bias facing piece. And if you're cutting view B, then you also have the sleeves. So this is the sleeve and you will need to cut two mirrored uh, image pieces. So if you're cutting on the fold, you simply place it down and cut two. But if you're not, you cut one like this and then you flip it over and you cut one like this. So now I want to talk for a couple of minutes about making a muslin. So it's always a good idea to make a muslin or a trial garment of any garment before you sew the final one in your nice fabric. But for the Elmley dress, it's basically mandatory. Why? Because this is a very fitted dress. And in particular, the location of the fisheye darts is going to make a really big difference in whether it fits you well or not. So here's how you make a muslin for the Elmley. You're gonna cut one front and one back piece. Don't worry about the lining. Don't worry about the sleeve. Don't worry about the facing. So just a front and a back. Sew the bust darts on the front and then so, uh, sorry, sew the bust darts and then mark the fisheye darts on the outside of the garment. So usually you would only mark them on the inside, but this time I want you to mark them on the outside. Now sew the muslin together at the shoulders and the side seams. You do need to put the invisible zip in now. I know that that's annoying, but it's really hard to fit a sheath dress without having it in. But the good news is it's great practice. So sewing an invisible zip for the first time can be a bit intimidating. Well, now you're gonna get a practice run before doing the final thing. You can later take the zip out and reuse it again. So you're not like wasting a zipper, but you do need to insert the zipper. So insert the zipper and sew it, and then sew the piece underneath the zipper. Again, when we get to the sew along, you'll see how to do this. So now you have a sleeveless sheath dress that has bust darts and invisible zipper down the back and only has the fisheye darts marked, but not sewn. So what you are now gonna do is safety pin the sit fisheye darts as if uh, where they're marked, okay? So, so safety pin them where they're marked, but you're safety pinning them on the outside of the dress. So what I mean is that you're gonna be safety pinning them here so that the flappy bit that normally will be on the inside is gonna be on the outside. Now try the dress on. Look and see if the fisheye darts are in the right place. So here are the two things you need to look for. The widest bit of the fisheye dart should be at your narrowest point or the point that you want to be the waist. So not everyone has a very visible waist or a very visible narrowest point. If you don't, just decide where you want that to be. But that's where you want the middle of the fisheye darts to be. So have a look and see where I've safety pinned it. Is it in the right place? If it isn't, using a pen, mark where the widest bit of the fisheye dart should be. Maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower. Then you now want to look at the top of the fisheye dart and that's the one that comes up underneath your boobs. 
you need to make sure that the ends are at least an inch down from your bust apex. And your bust apex is the largest part of your bust, so where you would measure your full bust around. For some people it's their nipples, not for everybody, but your bust apex. So these fisheye darts, you want at least an inch below your apex. You can go a little bit lower, but you know, about an inch to an inch and a half is good. Again, if the safety pin area isn't there, mark on where the top should actually be. Now, if you've made changes to where they are, take the dress off, take the safety pins out, and redraw the fisheye darts directly onto the muslin. So maybe you're moving everything down a bit. Maybe one bit went up and one bit went down. Safety pin it again, try it on again, and look and see, does it look better now? And when the fisheye darts are in the right place, what you'll find is that there aren't drag lines and that it's giving you a nice silhouette. It's coming in at the waist um, and that it's not creating like a pointy area around the bust. If darts are too long, they can make you look pointy. And if they're too short, you can end up with baggy fabric. And basically you can keep on changing those safety pins until they're in the right place. You can also do the same on the back. I will say on the whole, the back is much easier because you don't have boobs on your back. So normally you can get away with just using the fisheye darts at the point that they're at. But again, you can go and change those if you want. Once you have finalized where those should go, you then want to transfer that change back onto your pattern piece. So let's imagine this is your pattern piece and this was the original fisheye dart. And then what you realized when you marked it on your muslin is that this is too high, your waist is lower. So you marked, you marked on your muslin like this for where your waist is. And um, the top of this is also too high because your bust is lower than that. So really your bust is here. So now you're like, okay, what do I do? So the first thing is on your muslin measure, what's the distance between where the fisheye dart middle was and where yours is and measure down. And then the same thing, measure where the top of the dart was originally and where the top of your dart is. So this is on your muslin. Now come back to your piece of paper and mark these on. So you measured your muslin and you were like, okay, um, it was, I'm just looking at this three quarters of an inch lower. So now you simply come here, you measure down three quarters of an inch. You, you mark it on. So I'm basically taking what was on my muslin and putting it there. And now we're gonna redraw the darts. So we are simply going to join up the marks we made, the new marks we made, and then join it up to the bottom. So in this case, hypothetical case, the bottom of the dart was in the right place. So we're just going to redraw the darts. And honestly speaking, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter what your darts look like. You know, you, we just want the darts in the right place for your body. So in this case, someone has a lower bust and a lower waist, but their hip height is still the same. That's fine. So now you have a new dart and it's as simple as that. The final thing before we crack on is I just want to share with you the fabrics I'm going to be using in the sew along so you can follow along with what I'm doing. So I'm using quilting cotton, which I actually do not recommend as a fabric for the Elmley and definitely not for the lining. Why am I using it? Because it's easy for you to see what's going on, in particular because there's a very clear right and wrong side. So the colored side is the right side and the whiter side is the wrong side. That makes it good for video sew-alongs, but for you, don't use this kind of fabric, okay? Just to be clear. So I'm gonna be making the view A, the sleeveless sheath dress out of these two. The turquoise is gonna be the outside and the green is gonna be the lining. For the most part, I think it'll be fairly obvious as I'm sewing which is which, but that's your reminder. And then view B is gonna be this one. So we're gonna have a purple outside. So the purple is the shell, the main fabric, and then the light blue is the lining. So with that, let's get on to sewing. Now your pattern pieces are cut out. The first thing we want to do is stay stitch. What stay stitching is, is reinforcing curved areas to stop them stretching out because any curved area means that the fabric is on the bias. And if you remember, when fabric is on the bias, it's more likely to stretch. Now, that can be good in some circumstances, like making bias binding, but for this it's not good because we don't want this to stretch out, especially because we're later gonna be sewing it to a lining and we want them to match exactly. So, the first thing we're gonna do is stay stitch. When you stay stitch, you just wanna use a normal thread length. Some people will tell you to go to a shorter one, but often I find that messes it up. So keep at a regular stitch length 
and you want to start at the top and go towards the center and then start, go over here, start at the top and go towards the center. And you want it to be just inside the seam allowance. So just under half an inch from the edge is ideal. So that means it's three eighths from the edge effectively. And then you can also do the arm size round here and round here. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stay stitched the neckline, starting at the neckline, sorry, starting at the shoulder and ending at the center front. Okay, and you don't need to back stitch for this. Okay, we've got to the center. Now I want to do it from here to here. So the easiest way to do it is flip it over and do it this side. Okay, so that is done. And now, if you want to, you can also do the arm size. This is sort of an optional thing. You don't have to do it. And then the second side. Okay, so I have now stay stitched around the neckline and around the arm side of all of the main pieces. So in when I'm doing this sew along, the green is gonna be the lining and this kind of aqua blue is gonna be the outside. Obviously, these are not necessarily uh, fabrics you would choose to make your Elmley dress from, but they're very good because you can see them very clearly in um, video. So that's why I'm doing them in these colors. So these are the lining pieces. So the inside lining front has been done and then the two lining backs have had their stay stitching. And then we have the shell, which is the outside, the fronts, the backs are done, and then we have our front. So now if you haven't already done it, you should transfer the markings to all the pieces. Now you may have done this during the cutting process, in which case, great, but if not, this is how to do it. So I've already made the markings, but I'm gonna show you again how to do them. So you would take your pattern piece and put it on top of the wrong side, ideally, of your fabric. And this is the way I recommend to do it. There are many different ways you can do it, but this is the way I like doing it. So take a pin, and put it through the apex of the dart. So this is the apex of the bust dart. And then I make either I snip into the edge or I make a mark where the dart legs are at the side. Now I carefully flip this down and make a mark where the dart is, where the end of the dart is. And then fold it back and then simply use my chalk or my marker to join up the apex dot and the side. So I'm just going over the dart I already marked there. Now, these waist darts are a really cool element of the Elmley. So they are called fish eye darts. And they are basically a combination of an under the bust dart and a waist to hip dart. So the imaginary waistline, if there was one, waist seam would be here. So you may have seen bodices that look like this before. And then you may have seen a skirt that has a waist dart. So it's basically just all made into one. It's just a double ended dart. Mm -hmm. So you do exactly the same thing. You can either mark through, and um, we've actually got some little holes here, so it's easier to do it. Mark through or put a pin through and mark the um, spots. And then again, simply join them up like I've already done here. So you need to do that on all the pieces because there are many, many darts that we're doing. So next thing, sew those darts. So we're gonna begin by sewing the bust dart. So we're gonna fold it in half, right sides together, and I find it easy to actually fold the whole thing over like this. You want to match up the dart legs at the edge and put a pin there. 
And then you want to find the end of the dart apex and make it right on the edge of the fabric and put a pin there. Now I'm going to place a pin through the two legs and I'm going to check, did it come through exactly on the legs on the other side? And it did. That's good. If it didn't, you would move it around a little bit until it did. Okay, so that's the bus start. So now I'm going to go and sew that bus start. So we start at the outer edge of the fabric. Do some back stitch. Then go along taking the pins out as you go. As you get towards the end, there's various ways to finish a dart, but the easiest beginner way I'm going to show you now. So you literally sew off the end of the fabric, lift it up, cut the threads with a few inches left, and then you are going to just tie them off by hand. So we don't do back, so let's just separate them a little bit at the end. So two there. So we're, gonna, we're doing this and not just back stitching because back stitching can leave a little dimple at the end of your dart, which can look very nipply, which is an ideal. So by doing it this way, you end up with a nice smooth end to your dart. So I just sewed the bust dart. So now we're going to press it. So a uh, tailor's ham is really helpful. If you don't have this, a rolled up towel will do. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is press it just flat. This is always a good idea. Anytime you sew anything to kind of set the stitches flat. Now I'm going to open it up. And I am going to sort of to put it over the curve of the ham. And I'm going to flip the um, inside of the dart down. And now I'm going to press that. There we go. Now I'm going to flip it over to the right side. And if you are using a delicate fabric, you definitely want to use a press cloth on top here to make sure you don't scorch your fabric. I'm just using plain quilting cotton, so don't need to worry about that. So there you go. There is one bus start. So now you're going to repeat it on the other side. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to do the waist dart. So this is an unusual dart because it has two ends. So there's actually kind of a special way of doing it. So I'm actually going to start by pinning it in half like this. So I'm going to put the whole thing, turn the whole thing over and align the folds right through the middle of that dart. So it's going from point to point. And I'm going to just check that I have it aligned by sticking a pin through this corner and seeing if it comes out the same place on the other hand. And it did. Great. So that's pinned there. Then I'm going to pin at either end. And then for now, and you're going to see why in a second, I'm just going to pin this section. of the dart. And I'm just going to check again. Did it go through the legs here? It did. Great. So this time I am going to start sewing here at the middle and I'm going to go down to here. Now you need to make sure you're very accurate here. You don't want to go over the end. You do want to backstitch, but you want to be very careful because we're going to end up sewing from this point again. So you want to be accurate at this point. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to start at this middle point here. I'm going to take the pin out and carefully line it up. So I'm going to take just about two stitches and then I'm going to go back very carefully over the two and then sew down to the end. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the other end and tie it off the back. Give me a second here. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to tie these off. Now, 
You always want to sew a dart starting at the wide end and ending at the narrow end. So you can see the issue here. If we sewed from here to here, we'd be doing it the opposite way around. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna flip it over. So we're literally gonna go whoop onto the other side. And now I'm gonna put the pins in, in the other direction. And check that map, yep. Okay, so this time, I'm just gonna get these threads out of the way. I'm gonna start right here, right at the edge, and then come off so that we have a nice corner. So you want to carefully, and you can always use your hand wheel for this. So I'm using my hand wheel to get as close as I can. There we go. So I'm gonna go forward, back stitch, and then go for it. Pull that off and then tie these ones. Okay, tie, tie, tie. Okay, so I'm gonna trim the threads off. There's a lot of trimming with these darts. Okay. So now we have to press this dart. So I'm gonna get my ham again. The first thing I'm gonna do is press it flat. And then in this case, we're going to press the dart towards the center front. So that way, towards the middle. So again, we're gonna flip it over get that to be flat underneath, and I'm gonna do it in halves. So I'm gonna do the bottom half. Then I'm gonna do the top half. And this is basically gonna create really nice waist shaping on this dress, even though there's no waistline. So we're gonna turn it over and press it from the right side. Okay, so we've now sewn the bus dart and we've sewn the fisheye dart. So there is a lot of dart sewing ahead of you now, guys. So we need to sew the other bus dart and the other fisheye dart here. We also need to sew two more fisheye darts in the back of the shell. Then we need to sew all the same darts in the lining. So another two bus darts and another four fisheye darts. So that is the next step. So this is the front shell. We now have both bust darts pressed and we have both uh, fisheye darts pressed towards the center. Then we have both of the backs, the shell, which is the outer fabric back. We also have made them and pressed them towards the center. Now we've also done the same with the lining pieces, but with the fisheye darts, we've pressed them the other way. So in the lining, the fisheye darts go towards the side seams. The reason we do this is it's gonna reduce the bulk on the outside dress. If you keep on having more of them all on top of each other, it gets kind of bulky here, but by having the other ones on the other side, it reduces bulk. So the next thing to do is sew the shoulder seams. So we'll lay the front out here, and then we're going to lay the backs on top, lining up the shoulder seams. So I'm just gonna pin this on. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is just sew across here, then finish it, and then we're gonna press it towards the back. Okay, so we're going to sew the shoulder seam here. It's very straightforward. Half inch seam allowance. Then 
there we go. So now I'm going to finish the seam allowance. Um, you can do that in a number of ways. They're outlined in the book, but you can use a serger if you have one, which is what I'm going to do. You can use pinking shears, which are zigzag shears, or you can sew a narrow zigzag and then trim close to it. Any of those will work. Ultimately, um, there will be a lining, but it is a good idea to finish the edges because the lining won't be totally enclosed. So over time, if these fray, these fat fibers would fall out of your dress, which you don't want. So these shoulder seams have been sewn and finished. So now we're gonna press them, put them over a ham, finger press them towards the back. And have them do this. And you're gonna do exactly the same on the lining, but you're going to press those shoulder seams towards the front. So again, we're reducing bulk by doing them in opposite directions. So <clears throat> this is the point you'll get to on both view A and view B. You will have this in the shell and you will have a, exactly the same version in the lining, just with the darts pressed in different directions. Now, if you're doing view B, this is the point where we insert the sleeves. So I'm gonna show you how to do that on a separate sample, and then we will come back and do the side seams. So this is going aside for a few minutes. Our view B sample is in this very snazzy purple, which again has been chosen less for aesthetics and more for you being able to see what's going on. So we are going to install a sleeve. The sleeve we're going to install looks like this. Now, one of the big things about sleeves is you need to put them in the right way around. So the way you tell is that there is a single notch at the front of the sleeve and there is a double notch at the back of the sleeve. Um, we are going to be sewing these sleeves in using, using the method called sewing in flat. So I'll show you how that works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay my dress out flat on my work surface. Um, and this gets really big, so you're not gonna be able to see all of it on screen at the same time. But here we go. So this is one side. So this is the back and this is the front. Now I'm gonna to have to see if I'm on the right side for my, for my um, sleeve or not. So this is the front and this is the back. So I need my one notch going that side and my two notches going that side, so. Let's see if it's the right way around. Two notches, one notch, nope, wrong way around. So I need to spin it round and go to the other arm side instead. Okay, so here's the front, here's the back. And there are also notches in the arm side itself. So there's one notch here and there's two notches here. It's hard to see them on film, but they're there right now. So I'm gonna line them up again. One notch here, two notch here. Yes, they match. So now I am going to pin the sleeve onto the dress. So to do that, I'm going to flip the sleeve over so that they're right sides together. And the first thing I'm going to do is pin the top notch here with the shoulder seam. And I am going to pin it from this side so that when I sew it on, the sleeve is actually going to be underneath. Then I'm going to pin this end to this end. Then I'm going to match the two notches up. There we go. And then you should find that these two pieces go together exactly. So you may be aware, especially if you've sewn um, the Fairfax jacket, that some patterns we do um, gathering stitches here using basting because the two lines are different length than each other. But here they're actually identical, so you don't need to do that, they just pin together. Now we're gonna do the second half. Again, I'm gonna bring the ends together first. And I will say, I think this is something, it's so much easier to understand what's going on when you see something in video than just an illustration in a book. So I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, I know when I first read about how to do this, I very confused. Okay, so I did the notch and in between, and now I'm just gonna do the final section. Okay, so that is all pinned, and now I'm gonna sew from one end all the way to the other. So you can see the stay stitching here, but that's not a problem. It's gonna help it not stretch out. 
And as you're sewing, um, the stay stitching will be inside the seam allowance. So I'm going to start and back stitch, and then just go around. Keeping everything flat. Keeping the edges aligned. Okay, so that's sewn all along. So now the sleeve is sewn in and the edge has been surged, we're going to press. So in this case, we're actually gonna press the seam allowance towards the shell. That isn't totally typical when you're sewing sleeves, but in this case, because of the way that it's being lined later, um, it makes sense. It will become apparent why it makes sense at a later time. <laughs> so keep on moving your ham around so that you can get a nice flat press. Remember to try and avoid sliding your iron along the fabric. You want to be doing up and down. Um, it might not always be obvious because of the angle that you're looking at, but I'm lifting it up just a tiny bit between each press. Over here. Last bit. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the right side. So if you have delicate fabric, you should be using a pressing cloth. I don't, so I'm not. Okay, so we now have both sleeves inserted into the arm size, but the side seams are open. So the next thing we're gonna do is do these side seams. So I'm gonna show you on view B, and then I'll show you on view A. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna move this around just to try and maximize what you can see. So I'm going to lay the front out, right sides up, and then, turn over at the, at the shoulder seam. So here's the shoulder seam. And line up the two side seams. So the bottom, sorry, to here. And then this, this um, sleeve is basically getting folded in half. So these corners come together. So I'm gonna start pinning there. I'm gonna pin at the end of the corner. Now I'm gonna pin at the two underarm seams. So they're both pressed forward. I'm gonna match them up and pin them here. And then I'm just gonna pin the remaining sleeve. Just gonna put one pin in there. And now I'm gonna pin down the rest of the sides. So the easiest thing to do is to match up the notches. So there's a notch. Make sure that on this side, that the dart is still pressed down. When you show the other side, the dart will be pressed up. So it will, it will be a facing up, so it'll be easier to see. Now I'm gonna pin the end. I'm gonna pin this notch. The notches help you. And then I'm gonna pin in here. This, the notches actually represent points on the pattern to your body. So this notch represents your waistline. This represents your hip line. So if you ever do grading between sizes, which I talk about in the book, you'll need to know where those notches are. So now we are going to sew this, this seam in one go. 
So we're gonna start sewing at the hem. We're gonna go all the way up to the underarm and then along the sleeve in one go. So here's the hem, I'm gonna start here. Okay, and then we're coming up to the underarm. So you wanna make sure that the seam allowances are still facing towards the body. Then when you get to the seam, you're gonna pivot slightly and then go straight down the sleeve. Okay. So now I'm gonna finish that seam allowance and then I'm gonna sew the other side seam and finish that seam allowance. Okay, so we've now done the side seams on view B. So I'll just rotate it around so you can see. So there we go. And then you simply press those towards the back of the dress. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the side seams on view A. Okay, so here we have view A, which is the sleeveless version. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do the side seams here. So it's fundamentally the same as view B, just there's no sleeve. So I'm gonna turn it around on its side and match the side seams. So it's actually even easier. So I'm gonna match the underarm. I'm going to match the notch. I'm gonna make sure that the bust start is facing the right way. Then I've got the next notch. And the notches also help you keep the fabric evenly distributed. Without them, it's quite easy to get to the end and be like, huh, these are like an inch off. And the notches are kind of helpful waypoints to get you along there. Okay, so now we're simply gonna sew this whole seam and then repeat the same thing on the second side. So we've sewn, finished, and pressed the shoulder seams and the side seams on both the shell and the lining. And we've done that on our end on view A and view B, but you're only probably making one at a time. So just make sure that you've sewn and finished shoulder seams and the side seams. The next thing you're going to do is finish the center back edges of both the lining and the shell. The shell being the outside, the lining being the inside. We're doing this because um, once the zip has been, got, has been put in, it's very hard to finish these edges and they're going to be pressed open. And when you press a seam open, it's often easier to finish the seam allowances first. So we've done that. In my case, I've used serging, but you can also use a zigzag stitch or you can use pinking shears. Now, the next thing we need to do is only on view B. So if you're making view B with the sleeves, this is what you need to do to the lining. So we need to turn the edge of the armhole to the wrong side, the inside, by half an inch and press it. Now, to help me do that, and this is actually a really good tip when you need to do something like this, I've actually sewn at a half inch seam allowance all the way around the armhole. And not only is it a little bit easier to measure half an inch on your machine than when you're pressing, but it also kind of perforates the fabric a little bit and allows you to turn it over. And it also lets you see very easily because it goes all the way through the fabric, whether you have turned it at precisely the right point. So. <clears throat> you want to bring your tailor's ham or your rolled up towel because we're doing a curve. And because this is such a curved seam, you want to clip into it a few, in a few places, which will make it much easier for you to press the seam allowance over. Now you do need to be very careful not to touch the stitching line because this is, this is an area where if you cut through the stitching line, you are actually gonna end up with little holes on the inside of your dress and you don't want that. So I'm just rolling it along the stitching line and I really want to get the, the um, stitch just on the edge or a tiny bit to the inside of the garment. 
As with all the steps here, I'm using um, a black, very contrasting thread so that you can see it. But in your case, you want to use something that coordinates nicely with your fabric. And so what that means is even if a tiny bit of this thread is visible in the end on the inside of your garment, it doesn't really matter because it'll be really hard to see. And it will be on the inside, double whammy. So I'm just gonna continue going round. Snipping in where I need to. Now I'm going to turn it to the right side and you'll be able to see whether um, that has been done in a neat way. So you want the stitching to either be on the very, very edge or just roll to the inside. So that looks good. I should undo a little bit more there. And it needs to go under a little bit more here. Okay. So you're now going to repeat that with the second side of the view B lining. Okay, so now for what many people think is the trickiest part of sewing a dress like this, but actually, don't worry, it's not that hard, in inserting the invisible zip. So this is exactly the same for view A and view B. I'm gonna show you on view A, but you will do the same thing on view B. So you have your invisible zip. You want about 20 to 22 inches. Um, but actually it doesn't matter the exact length. Um, it's very easy to shorten zippers. If you have an even longer one and you want to shorten it, you simply sew across backwards and forwards a few times over the teeth. That only works if you have plastic teeth, but most invisible zippers are plastic teeth. And then literally trim it underneath and that will work. Um, I'd say you, you, you almost can't have too long a zipper. If your zipper's a bit longer than intended, doesn't really matter. But if it's much too short, like say it was only this short, then you would have a problem because you actually need it to get into the dress. So there is a marking at the center back um, around here on the, um, on the pattern that indicates where the zip is meant to go to. So at least, as long as your zip goes to at least there, you are fine. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare the zip. So this is an optional step, but it helps, especially if you're a beginner. So an invisible zipper, this flat side is the side that's gonna be facing the right side of the garment. And the idea is that you sew the fabric close enough on this tape that you don't see the zipper at all. So you'll just see the pull, but you won't see the zipper. And on the back side, you can see this ridge. So this is where the teeth are, but they're pushed to the inside. So invisible zips, I think, are actually the easiest type of zip for a beginner, um, even though sometimes, you know, they have a scary reputation. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to gently press the teeth away from the, away from this tape, it's called the zipper tape, which helps make it a little bit easier to sew. So I'm gonna turn it to the wrong side. So that means the ridge is facing up here. Then I'm gonna use an iron, but you don't wanna use a super hot iron because you don't want to melt the plastic teeth. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently push the teeth over a little bit. Now, it doesn't have to be totally flat, but I'm just pushing them over. So when the zip comes, it's a little bit like this. Sorry, I'm doing the right angle. And you're, we're kind of pulling it open a little bit like this. I'll be honest, I sometimes skip this step, <laughs> but 
it is a good one for beginners. So just make sure your iron isn't mega hot because it can melt the plastic. Okay, and this is gonna make it a little bit more easy for the zip to actually be invisible. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our shell. So this is the outside of view A. And I am going to, just for the sake of starting this, I'm gonna take the left-hand side as you're looking at it and open it up and just have one layer here. So this is the left-hand side as you're looking at it um, face up. So you now want to put your zipper face down onto the edge. So what that means is that if you see the, um, the pull, the actual like dangly bit of the pull is on the right side. And this part that I don't even know what the shape of that is, but this flat piece is on the wrong side. So you want to have the zip right sides together with the center back. So I'm going, I'm going to show you this We're, we've sort of zoomed in here so that you can see it as clearly as possible. Um, but I will move it around as I'm putting it together. So a key thing is that at the top of an invisible zipper, I don't know how easy it is for you to see that there is a plastic stopper and then the zip starts, the teeth start. And then there's this additional, um, section, which is about five eighths of an inch at the top. So you want this plastic stopper to be more or less half an inch down from the top. Um, it can be ever so slightly more than half an inch is okay, but you don't want it less than that because we're gonna later be sewing across here at half an inch. So you want the plastic stopper to be not get caught in that half an inch. And to be honest, you can just line up the top of the tape. That works fine. The top of the tape is more or less five eighths, which means that the top of this, this, this stopper will be just over half an inch out. So now I'm going to continue to pin the zipper down. Now, as you do this, you can keep the zipper tape aligned with this edge of the center back. So we have already finished the center back. And you want to keep on going down. Now, as I'm doing this, the, the, the smooth edge of the zipper tape is on this side and the teeth are on this side. Okay, and then I'm keeping on going down. Okay, and then you get towards the bottom and you just put that final one in here. Okay, so now what we are going to do, so you can see the other side is here. So this is what it looks like. So right side with the dangly bit facing the right side of the fabric, pinned all the way up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew this side of the zipper to the garment. So when you're sewing, we are sewing just on the side of the teeth. So you definitely don't want to sew through the teeth. If you sew through the zipper teeth, you won't be able to use the zip. But you don't want to sew all the way over in the middle here because then lots of the zipper tape will show on the outside. So you want to get as close to the zip teeth as you can without actually touching them. Now as a beginner, you want to earn more on not touching them than you do getting close because if you touch them, the garment, you can't wear the garment. So that's a huge problem. If you get a bit further away and your zip can be a bit more seen on the outside, you know, whatever, that's fine. Especially because you're gonna use a coordinating zipper tape color, unlike me. So if I don't do this perfectly, which, you know, spoiler alert, I won't do right now. But if I don't do it perfectly, you would really be able to see it. But if you picked a similar zipper color to this, then you actually wouldn't see. Um, and generally you want a zipper color that's a bit darker, if anything, than your fabric, because it's sitting in a bit of a shadow. And if the, if the zipper tape is a little bit on the darker side, your brain just kind of reads it as like a bit of a shadow there. So that's my tip there. So we're gonna go over to the machine and I'm gonna show you how to sew with a zipper foot. 
So we are now going to change out our presser foot for a zipper foot. So this is a zipper foot. There's also something called an invisible zipper foot, but I'm actually gonna show you how to do this just using a regular zipper foot because I think it can work just as well. And it's a little bit easier as a beginner. So depending on your machine, there's a different ways to take this off. Sometimes you're taking the whole piece off and sometimes just this. So here I have a little lever and I press it and it drops off. Now, this can go on two ways. It can go here or here, depending on what side of the zip you're doing. I often like forget which side it should be. So I just try and see if it works. So I think it's this side. So I lower the presser foot and it grabs onto it. And when I lift it up, it's now connected. So, so how this works is you, this, foot is allowing you to get really, really close with your stitching. You want the edge of the hard zipper teeth to be just on the outside of here. And basically this foot is helping you say, stay straight because you will constantly run the zipper teeth down the edge just here. And then you can see if I just push it down that the needle is in exactly the right place to be very, very close to there. Now, this can be a bit tricky and it can be tricky to get it right first time. So what I recommend is that you first baste it in. So what that means is just go up to the largest, longest stitch length you have. So in my case, it's four. We're not gonna back stitch. we're just gonna go down. Then we're gonna check, see if it did it right. If it did, we will re-sew with a smaller stitch because basting stitches aren't strong enough for daily wear and tear. And if it is wrong, then it's gonna be really easy to unpick it. So. No back stitching. And as I do this again, I'm going to take out pins, make sure it's even, and then just keep these zipper teeth butted up against that. So a lot of people are scared of sewing zips, but as you can see, it's not actually that difficult. If you don't have a zipper foot, you can theoretically do this with a regular foot, but you have to go very slowly and very carefully to get in the right place. That said, I will say, I think 99% of sewing machines come with a zipper foot. So there's a high chance you have one. And if you don't, it really is something worth buying. Okay, and when you get towards the bottom, you're not going to be able to sew all the way to the very bottom because this gets in the way, but that's not a problem. We're going to look at, we're going to resolve that later. So go as far as you can go. Okay. And then for basting anyway, we're not going to backstitch. So now you can see that I have that stitch there. Now, here is the way that you check. If you went too close to the zipper teeth, you zip it up. So you go to the bottom and it kind of flips over and you zip up like this and look, there we go. So what that tells me is that I didn't stitch over the zipper teeth because I'm able to zip it up. If I wasn't able to zip it up, then I would have to unpick the basting and do it again. So I'm gonna undo it, open it out again. And now I'm going to go over that stitch line again. And this time I'm going to use a two and a half length and I'm going to back stitch. Okay, so that's the first side sewn. Okay, so the first side is sewn on here. Now, this next part is probably the trickiest part and it's helpful if you can see the whole zip. So I'm, I'm turning it around here. So what I need to do is I need to bring the other side round as well. So that they are facing each other. So we have the other side of the back lined up here. So let me just get it as clean as possible so you can see what's going on. 
Okay. So now you do the double flip. And it's not very intuitive. And I think when you're a beginner, it's very hard to be like, did I do this right? But if you do it slowly, you will get there. And you can also test to make sure you've done it right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flip this zipper over. So I'm flipping it over so that the right side is now up on this side and here is the pull, okay? And then I'm gonna flip it over again. So now I'm gonna flip it over again and I'm going to line it up with the other center back. So I'm gonna do this again now because this is the single most confusing thing. And I hopefully I can make it not confusing. So this is what we've sewn in so far. The whole zipper is right sides down here. I am flipping this over just this one side. So now the pull is facing up and then I'm flipping it over one more time. So the bottom is now kind of a bit twisted. The edge of the zipper tape wants to be with the edge here and the teeth are on this side. This is the right side, the right sides are together. So now we are going to pin in exactly the same way. Now, the important thing here is they need to be pinned at exactly the same heights on the dress. Otherwise it will kind of skew the back of the dress. The nice thing is, is that because we just use the top of the zipper tape here, we can just use the top of the zipper tape here as our marking point. So going to go down now, you got to make sure you're only pinning the center back. You're not going through the other layers. And the nice thing with zips is, um, although it can be a little bit confusing or a bit tricky the first time you do it, you can base them, you can hand base them, you can um, machine base them to make sure that they're working correctly and you can redo it as many times as you want so you can always go back and try again so it's just not something you need to worry about too much because if you do it wrong it doesn't matter so when you get to the bottom you're going to see that this is almost like twisted at the very bottom because um, it's almost like f this piece is like flipped but that's okay that's how it's meant to be Now, to check that this works right, um, it's a good idea to try zipping it up before you do the final sewing. However, zipping it up when there are pins in it is actually very difficult. What's easier is to baste it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna baste it again, then we're gonna try doing the zip up, see if it works. If it doesn't, and believe me, the first probably 10 times I ever did an invisible zip, it wasn't right, then you can rip the basting out and try again. I know this one is right because I just did it, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to baste it and how to check first. So back over to the sewing machine. So now we are sewing this side and slightly unusually, we're gonna sew with the fabric on the right side of um, the needle. You don't usually do that and there is another way to do it, but I think for beginners, this is the easiest. But what you can see now is that now the zipper teeth are on the other side this presser foot is no longer in the right place. So I need to move it over to the other setting. So I'm gonna let it go, move it over to the other bar and pick it up. So once again, I'm going to place it with the zipper teeth butting up against the edge and I've set it to a basting stitch. Another thing you can do is keep it in place with Wonder Tape, the double-sided dissolvable tape I've been showing you, um, which is actually really helpful for this. With the base thing, it doesn't matter if it isn't 100% perfect. We just wanna see if we've put it around the right way. Okay, so I've basted that in. So now what we do, 
So it's a bit confusing at this point because you have a zip that's connecting some of the back, but not all of it. So what you want to do is just go down, get your zip pull and give it a go. So zip it up. See if you can zip it all the way up. And I can. Then at the top, it should look a bit like this. So there should be at least half an inch at the top here. Um, the top should line up. So you don't want one down here and one up there. So if you did, you need to, um, you need to rip out the base thing and repin it on. But here, mine are like meeting perfectly at the top. So yeah, so that's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to open it up. And now I'm going to do the final stitching. So I'm going to go back down to a two and a half. And this time I will back stitch. Okay. Okay. So our zipper is now installed. So you can see the idea is that it's invisible because you can't see it on the outside here. If I pull the fabric apart, you can start seeing the tape. So, you know, you can also sew closer or if this was matching the color, you wouldn't really see it. And I'm just checking that it can open. Yep. So that's all fine. So now we have this open piece at the bottom, at the bottom of the zip. So now we're going to, um, sew that shut. So the way we do that is the first thing we're going to turn the whole dress to the wrong side. So I've turned it to the wrong side and you can see the zip on the wrong side here. And then if we go down, we can see this gap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the whole thing in half along the center back seam. So the zip is now at the edge and I'm going to extend the open piece down here. And then I'm basically going to pin and then sew this back seam. So you want to make sure that it's lining up at the end. And what's going to happen is the seam allowance is going to flip up and the zip is actually going to be sandwiched in the middle. So you want to start pinning just underneath the zipper. And then you just want to pin all the way down here. So sometimes you might find by the time you get to this end that there's a tiny bit off here. You're actually better off not to um, pull the fabric because you will end up with buckling here, which doesn't look very well. Good. So I'm actually just going to leave that and I will trim this to make it more even later. It's more important that this lies totally flat. So. We are going to sew down this back. Now, a crucial thing is where you start sewing. So here is the end of the zipper sew of the zipper sewing line. There is still free zipper here. Okay, so this is the end bit that you didn't sew. You want to start sewing at a half inch seam allowance from the edge, and you want to start just a bit above that zip. So half an inch in is roughly here and you want to start before. So if you can see the zip stitching ends here and I'm going to start here. And what this does basically is ensures that you don't have a gap at the bottom of the zip. So let's go over and sew it. Okay. So the zipper foot is actually still really useful for this step for getting close enough. So you want to fold the zipper like this so that the seam allowances are coming out like that as evenly as you can. It's a little bit of a playing with it. Place it underneath and then the zipper inside where there's a ridge is what's against this part here. Now, Actually, sorry, I need to go over. You also are now sewing it at half an inch from the edge. So it's a little bit tricky to begin with, and you might even want to mark on like how far is this from the edge. I can kind of eyeball it, um, but it's about here. So for this first bit, it's gonna be really helpful having the zipper foot. As you get lower down, 
You don't technically need it, but don't worry about it. You can still use it. So, we'll do a back stitch. And then just continue down. So remember, the presser foot looks a bit different than you're used to. So just make sure that you're still using the half inch seam allowance marking on your machine here. Okay, so that seam is now sewn. I'm just going to change out to a regular presser foot again for the next step. So this seam is now sewn and we're gonna press it. So the first thing we're gonna do is press it flat. And the next thing we're gonna do is press it open, which is actually something I think is quite the satisfying bit of an invisible zipper. So we're going to lay the whole dress out. Now, if you were doing this on an ironing board, you would like put it over the ironing board so that you weren't, um, so you weren't pressing through the other side as well. I don't have a full ironing board here. It doesn't really matter, but that's what you would do. So. We're gonna just open these seam allowances and what you can see is now it's just like a really nice continuous line down from the invisible zipper. I'm gonna press the seam allowances open. And then I recommend pressing the sides of the zipper too. So again, you need to be careful. You don't want to have too hot an iron. You don't want to melt your zipper. But I'm just basically, I don't wanna move those, pressing flat okay so you have this really pretty invisible zipper now um, some people like to do a few hand stitches to secure the end but because we're adding lining you're never gonna see that so it's not really something you need to do um, I am then actually going to turn it around to the right side okay so this is the right side and can you see my invisible zipper really it starts here it's almost invisible I would say okay so now I'm just gonna press from the right side my almost invisible zipper which isn't bad given that it's a contrasting color <clears throat> so there is your invisible zipper in your shell you did it many people are very scared by these and put up them off but you know really wasn't that difficult now we're going to show you how to clean finish the lining, which is actually kind of a slightly more advanced skill for many beginners, but it's not that difficult. So I'm very happy to show you it too. So what we now need to do is the shell needs to be the right side out. So I'm gonna show you on view A first, and then I'm gonna show you view B because it's slightly different. So we want our shell right side out you open the zipper and then you want to kind of flip the zipper tape back. And what I mean by that is just pull it out like this as if you had just sewn it. So I know that we just pressed it over. Don't worry about that. It'll get repressed. But open, flip open the zipper so it looks like this. Then you want to get your lining. So here is my lining. So it's a little bit tricky to show in a narrow view, but I will try my best. So now I'm gonna turn the lining the wrong way out. So lining is almost like a coat. That's how it kind of feels right now. And the lining is the wrong way out. I'm just gonna trip these threads, which didn't get trimmed earlier. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is literally Curl the lining around the uh, shell, almost as if it was a coat. So I'm actually gonna bring my shell on top. I'm gonna place my lining down. I'm gonna open it up. And I am going to place my shell, right sides out, inside it. So, you are matching up the, all the edges. So the necklines are matched up. Here's the back, here's the armhole, and then here's the lining armhole. And I'm literally going to wrap it over. So now I have right sides together. This is my lining, this is my main, and it's all lined up. So literally I'm just bringing it around as if it was like a coat. 
So bringing it over, lining up all the edges. So you can line everything up except the bottom piece here where you already sealed up this um, seam. But otherwise, the lining is just wrapping around the shell. Okay? So, the next thing we're going to do is sew the zipper to the lining. But before I do that, I want to show you how you wrap the view B around. So, actually, to hold on one second. You know what I'm gonna do? First I'm gonna pin and then I'm gonna show you. So, what you need to do now, remember that you want your, your um, shell, the zipper flipped out. You are going to pin the lining to the shell along the back edge and the zipper is sandwiched in the middle. So you don't want the zipper like this, you want the zipper like this, and then you are going to place the lining on top. So as you do that, you are sandwiching the zipper in the middle, all the raw sides are together, and then you can feel the teeth over here. And I'm going to pin all the way down. Again, I'm just pinning it, making it a sandwich. And um, you go all the way down the zip as far as you can. You won't be able to go all the way to the end as usual because you're gonna hit the end of the zip. Okay, so I'm gonna get to about here and then the zip curves and I can't do anything more. Okay, and then I'm just gonna repeat it on the other side. You want to make sure the lining is exactly matching at the top because again, it will pull if it isn't. Okay, getting towards the bottom here. Okay, so that zip is pinned in and it's ready to be sewn. But before I do that, let me show you the view B. So. I'm going to put this to the side. Next step, we'll be sewing that. So for view B, we have the outer shell, which I've also put an invisible zip in in exactly the same way, but it has sleeves. And then we have the lining, which doesn't have sleeves. Let me just take this off. Okay. So once again, I'm going to have the lining is going to be wrong sides out. And remember that earlier we pressed the seam allowances of the arms, armholes underneath on this one. Okay, so here's the lining. That's the right side, this is the wrong side. It's not quite as clear in this fabric, but you can just about see it. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna open it up as if we're putting on a coat. We're going to get the shell, which is right sides out on top and open up the zip. And the same thing, but this time, the thing that's a bit different is, we've got the sleeve here and no sleeve here. So what do we do? It's literally like putting on a coat. So imagine you're putting on a sleeveless jacket. Your sleeve that you're wearing is just gonna poke through, okay? So fold that over there. Stick it through. Fold it over there. So you've achieved, you got to the same point as on view A. The only difference is that the sleeves are poking through on the, um, on the sides. Now you are going to pin and then sew the lining to the zipper in exactly the same way as view A, which I will show you now. Okay, so I preemptively changed the presser foot out incorrectly. So let's get our presser foot back on. Zip presser foot back on. So here we have the inner and the outer layers, the shell and the lining and the zip with the zip teeth facing away. And what we want to do is we want to sew through the layers almost on top of that previous stitching. If it's slightly out far further away, that's okay because we don't want the lining catching in the zip. But it's the same principle. But this time you're kind of doing it blind because you would just have to feel where the ridge is, and this is where the zipper foot really comes in handy because you can line up 
this ridge there of the zipper teeth with the edge here and it will guide you. So once again, if you want, you can baste it. I'm not going to here because I know what I'm doing, but you can. So I'm going to start by back stitching there. And then I'm going by touch. So I'm going along the edge. Okay, and then you might have to adjust a little bit as you go down because it nearly needs to be totally flat. And then just go as far down again as you can. Okay, so now I'm looking at it. I did a big wobble here. Can you see? It was even and then there's a wobble. So I'm gonna go back and just do that section again. And because that wobble was too far away rather than too close to the zip, I don't actually need to remove the original stitching because it's not gonna be visible. So, did that. So now I need to do it on the other side. So let me just pull up the other side. And I'm going to change the side of my zipper foot again and do the same thing. feels a bit like sewing backwards if you're really used to having it the other way around. It's good for left-handed people for once. Let's try and avoid the layers slipping away from each other. There we go. Okay, so now this center back has been sewn. So the invisible zipper is sandwiched in the middle. So you're gonna get this beautiful clean finished zipper with no hand sewing there. However, we still have the open end. So remember we um, sewed together the lower back piece on the shell. Well, now we need to do the same thing for here. Now, the key thing here is that we don't want to sew through the shell as well. So what you need to do is you need to pinch the lining up and away from the shell and you're going to pin it together. But the up and away is the key thing. So you want to start at the bottom of the zipper. Okay. And you're going to start about an inch below where you were sewing the lining on to the zipper. So there, and again, I'm pinching the lining so that it's just lining to lining, right sides together. Oops, dropping pins. And I'm not pinning through the shell. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. This is the kind of thing that is so much easier to show in reality than it is in a illustrated diagram <laughs> in a book. So I'm glad I can show you this because it's not actually that hard but I see that it can seem like it. Okay, again, they aren't perfectly matching at the bottom, but I'd rather them be flat than match perfectly. Okay, so if you're following along with the um, images in the book, what I've done in the book is it's laid out where the zip opening's here, and then I've pinned along the lining here, and then inside, the shell is like over here. So I've just pulled the whole shell away. So I'm only sewing through the lining. So now I'm going to finish this back portion. 
Okay, so I've still got my zipper foot on because it's going to help here. I'm going to bring my fabric in. And you want to make sure as well, let me get it, that the um, zipper pull is not going to be caught in the stitching or the bottom of the zipper. Okay, there we go. And we're going to start sewing about an inch down from where the lining was attached to the zipper. Okay, so that last bottom section of lining is pressed and we're just gonna press it open. Again, it's a little bit easier if you have an ironing board versus what I have, but I've just pushed the shell up and out of the way. And I'm just gonna press this lower bit open. You can't press the actual zip itself right now. There we go. There will be a little hole here that's fine. Um, there are different options that I'll show you in a minute. You can leave it open or you can hand sew it up if you want at a later time. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew the neckline together, sewing the shell and the lining together. So it's already secured at the top here, um, but what we're gonna do is we have to do a little special flip, <laughs> which is basically gonna give us a really neat corner here. So. We're gonna pin around, but we'll start here. And what we're gonna do is, this is the sandwich. We are gonna flip the whole thing over where, where, where you can feel the inside of the zipper teeth here, okay? So you flip, you feel where the ridge is of the zip and flip it over so that the ridge is now on this side. And we're gonna pin at the top here. So this is gonna get us a really nice, totally clean finish at the top. I think until you've done it once, you're like, how? I don't really understand how that's gonna work, but trust me, it will. And then we're gonna do the same thing here, but flipping that way. So flip over. Now we're gonna pin the rest of the neckline together. So you want to use the various reference points that you have. So the shoulder seams can match up and the seam allowances should be pressed in different directions. And then I'm just gonna add a few more here. You can see the stay stitching that I did at the beginning to stop it stretching out. Then you can align the center front notches and then pin the rest of the neckline. I'm gonna pin the second shoulder. Okay, this should be going this way. So actually the seam allowance on this is flipped the wrong way. So I'm just fixing that. So we want the shell shoulders to be flipped towards the back and the lining shoulders to be flipped towards the front. So that's just what I fixed there because they were going the wrong way. Then going all the way around to the front. Okay, so now we're going to sew the whole way around, including over this folded corner. And you want to make sure that you really start at a strong right angle perpendicular to this edge because that will ultimately be the top corner of where your um, zip is. So it's really, really important that you get that done accurately. You also, if you feel through, should be able to feel the plastic stopper at the top of the zip. So you definitely need to make sure that that plastic, that plastic stopper is less than half an inch from the top because you're gonna be sewing half an inch across here. So let's go over to the sewing machine. 
Okay, so I'm going to start here. And I just misspoke a second ago. I meant that the plastic stopper needs to be more than half an inch from the edge, not less. So I can feel it there. It's actually at about five eighths, so that's fine. So I'm back to my regular presser foot, half an inch from the front, from the edge, and I'm going to sew. Okay, so I've sewn around the neckline now. So before we flip it, we need to do a bit of trimming. So the first thing we're going to do is trim across this corner. Now, it's important, but it's also delicate. Whatever you do, you do not want to cut through the stitching line you just did. If you cut through that, it's actually very, very hard to fix it. Um, and you will have a hole at the top of your zipper. And you also don't want to cut so close to it that the little bits of fabric just get pulled through it. So what we're gonna do is we need to cut across this corner through all the layers and you'll be getting a little zip. But I would say start at least an eighth of an inch above the stitch line because you can always snip it a little bit more but you basically can't repair it. So I have snipped across that corner and I'm going to snip across here. I mean, believe me, it's definitely something I have done in the past. <laughs> You can try and repair it, but it's just really tricky. Okay, now the other thing we want to do is clip into the curves a little bit. So where the seam is most curved, we're going to just clip little Vs out of the seam allowance. Again, going close to, but not through the neckline. Um, we're doing this because the seam allowance, the edge of the seam allowance is actually longer because of the curve than the stitching line. And by doing this, it allows everything to turn and lay flat. And for concave curves like this, you want to cut little triangles out. For convex curves, like a princess seam over your bust, you can just cut snips and it will be fine. But for this type, these are better. Okay, shake those off. Okay, so now we are going to understitch the neckline. So it's a point before we do the full flip. Um, and again, it's kind of confusing to show in a um, picture, but hopefully you can understand it a bit more easily here. So what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to reach my hand in until I reach this neckline, okay? So my hand's in here and I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to pull it through. And what I basically want to see is I want to see the, the seam junction of the neckline all the way around. So I'm basically, hold on, just, just keep on pulling it so that and this is exceptionally hard to show in a photo. So you're pulling the pieces apart so that you can see the neckline here that we've just, that we've just sewn. And this is the outside and this is the inside. This is the lining. And what we are doing is understitching the lining to the seam allowance below. So what does this mean? So if I show you inside here, this is the junction of where the main and the lining come together. And what we're wanting to do is the seam allowance to go towards the lining side. And then we're actually going to sew on top of it. And we're going to sew on top of it here, just on the side. Now, this seems confusing. And believe me, I get that it is a little bit. The reason that we do understitching is because when you wear the eventual dress, and let me kind of roughly pull it out so you can kind of see what it's going to look like like this, right? This is the back of the dress. Here's the zip, here's the neckline. We don't want the lining peeking through to the outside. And what, under, what understitching does is it secures it down in the right place. 
Now, um, if you do understitching on a slightly more simple garment, um, it's a little bit more obvious what's going on here because it's this big, long garment. It's a little bit harder to see. But basically you want to open up your dress to this point and then make sure that the seam allowance is going under the lining. So you can use your fingers to push that. And then we are gonna sew on this side of the lining and I'm just gonna get it round so I'm gonna be putting it in the machine like this. You can't sew all the way up to the lining, so up to the zipper, so start a couple of inches back. And I am then just going to push it through the machine and keep on bringing the seam allowance in the right direction until I go all the way around until I'm near the zip again. So I'm gonna go over to the machine now. So one thing I do wanna mention, if this feels a little bit too crazy for you, you can skip understitching. No bad thing's gonna to happen to you. Now, to get to this, get this on the machine, it's a bit tricky. What you need to do is you need to put your arm up the lining and basically pull all the lining through the machine first. So I'm pulling, pulling, pulling over. Keep on pulling the lining through until I get to the end of the zip here. I am going to use my fingers to make sure that, um, first of all, there's only one layer of fabric in here. So you've got to be careful. That's why you need all the lining has to be shoved over here. And you want to make sure that the seam allowance is pressing the right way. So if I look underneath, I can check that. And I'm going to keep on checking with my fingers. So this is a form of edge stitching. So once again, we're going to do we're gonna put the join of the two fa fabrics in the middle of the presser foot, and then I'm gonna move my needle over. If you can't do that, you don't have that on your machine, no problem. Instead, keep your, your needle in the middle, and then you would move the fabric slightly over to the side. Okay, and then we just very carefully, making sure we've only got one layer, sew around. So, Underneath with my thumb, I'm pushing the seam allowances this way. Keep on pulling the whole thing, pushing the seam allowances over. When you stop to do something, you really want to stop with your needle down. I didn't a second ago, and so I got a little zigzag, which isn't ideal. Okay. Now I'm approaching the other end of the zip, and there's only so far I'm going to be able to go again. I didn't follow my own advice there. I should have had my needle down. And backstitch. Okay, now I'm gonna have to pull all of this through the machine to get it off. Okay, so what it's gonna look like is this. So you can see this is the right side, this is the light, sorry, the right side of the shell, this is the lining, and there's gonna be a line of sewing along the lining. And on the inside, it's gonna look like this. So it's basically sewn through the seam allowance. Okay, so now the exciting piece, making it look a bit like a dress. So you, we've already turned it once in order to do the stitching. So I'm gonna take the lining and basically shove it back inside the dress. It's hard to explain this, but you'll figure it out. So you want the right side of the dress out, you want the lining on the inside. Because I am using two quilting cottons, the lining is much bulkier than you would usually do. So even if you had a stiffer outer fabric like I have, you wouldn't normally also have a stiffer inner fabric. So this would be a little bit easier, but just keep on pulling it until 
it's beginning to look like a dress, okay? Now, we need to do a few bits of finessing here. So the first thing is these corners are looking a bit weird right now. So you wanna take a point turner or another sort of pointy object, but with a reasonably blunt end, because what you don't wanna do is push through. And you basically want to, you can put an arm through the, your hand through the armhole. You want to gently point, push out the point at the corner where the zip is. So you can pull it a little bit from the outside as well. And the zip, top of the zip should be enclosed in the seam that you just did through the power of the flips. So there we go. There's a nice top to the zipper there. Totally enclosed. The lining is totally enclosing the zipper. Okay, let me do the other side. So this is actually a really, I think this is a really nice technique. A lot of beginner things that have an invisible zipper to have you hand stitch the lining to the zip, which is fine, but it is nowhere near as elegant and professional looking as this. So I really like this technique. So I'm pulling the zipper out. And I'm just using my point turner to gently push it out. If you don't have an actual point turner, or this is actually called a hera for, um, here, hera, I'm not sure, for um, paper, paper crafts, but you can use a knitting needle. You can even use like the closed ends of your scissors, just be really careful with that. So the next thing we're gonna do is check the zip, moment of truth. So we're gonna go up and great. And assuming you did that all correctly, the tops should more or less match there. If they are a tiny bit off, do not worry. No one's gonna notice. The other thing you can do is you can add by hand a hook and eye. So if you um, accidentally had the zip a little bit too far down, so say it stopped there for you rather than all the way at the top, you can sew a hook and eye to the top and it will just secure it there when you wear the dress. But if you follow the instructions, it should take it all the way up to the top. So the next thing we want to do is um, press around the neckline and get that all nice and crisp. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna open this. And as you press, you want to make sure that the lining isn't showing at all on the right side. And it shouldn't, especially because of that understitching. But as you put it over your ham, just gently roll the fabric so that you don't see the lining. So you can see on the other side, there's actually just a tiny bit of the shell that curls around to the inside. And that's what's giving you this really beautiful clean finish. So this is called a clean finish in sewing where you just have an edge and there's no visible stitching. Um, and that's because of the way that we have um, finished it. And this is actually something that really elevates your sewing. Um, it makes things look a lot less kind of homemade in an obvious way. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice thing to know how to do. Clean finished lining is the name of this. So I'm just gonna open this up again. So that, I mean, look at this. This is really starting to look like an actual dress. So I'm gonna bring the zip up. That's matching. Yep, we've got a nice neckline going on there. You can see the lining in there, beautiful. So before we go on, there is one optional thing. So we have a little hole at the bottom of the lining. So I'm gonna turn the whole dress inside out. So here's the lining now on the inside. So. We do have a hole now here, just because of the logistics of how you sew the lining to the shell, you can't actually sew it all the way down. So you have a couple of options, um, all involving hand sewing. Okay, so for this, you're going to need a hand sewing needle and some thread. Um, if you don't know how to hand sew, then check out the standalone tutorial that we have on hand sewing. And I'm gonna use a slip stitch to do this. Okay, so here is the gap in the lining and here is the zipper. And so what we want to do is just 
basically sew the remaining liner to the zipper. So I will say on this side, it's a little bit buckled um, just because of how I did it, but it's fine, it's the bottom of the zipper. But we're gonna take a hand sewing needle and I have knotted the end and I'm going to go in at the bottom of where the lining is actually sewn to itself. And you can slip the end of the thread in there. I'm gonna caveat this guys, I am not the best hand sewer in the world, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So now you're gonna slip stitch, which is basically going round and round. So I'm going to take a little nip of the zipper tape, make sure you only have the zipper tape and you're not going through layers of fabric. And then I'm gonna go over and take a little nip through my fabric. And now I'm gonna go back into the zipper just across so that ultimately what I end up with is just a tiny, um, a tiny straight stitch that's visible. So I'm gonna go across again, across and then up. And I'm just, you know, again, how good are you at sewing? Like you can take really small stitches. I, I think, I guess I'm taking like maybe quarter of an inch, maybe slightly less. And then across again, and then take another bit of the edge there. Oh, something happened there. And then I got to the top. So I'm just gonna make two knots here just to finish it. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat the same on the other side. So I'm going to knot the end of my thread again. Again, when I say I'm not the best hand stitcher in the world, there are, there are better ways to do this knotting, but you know what? I'm just doing it the old fashioned way, like tying my shoelaces. Okay. So this time um, I'm actually gonna sew from the other side because I'm right-handed and it's easier. So again, I'm gonna find where the gap is. So the gap starts here. So I'm going to begin by coming in behind the fabric, behind the lining. and then hide my thread tail inside the garment. Okay, now again, only sewing through the zipper tape and nothing else, I'm going to take a little pinch of the zipper tape and then go along and take a little pinch at the edge of the fabric. Then straight back over to the zipper tape, little nip, little nip of the edge and then keep on doing that. Please do not show this to your, uh, your hand sewing teacher. I'm sure they'll probably have a conniption at quite how poor my technique is, but I sew garments on sewing machines <laughs> much more than by hand. So not an embroiderer, not yet anyway. So the point though is it works. And as before, I'm using a contrasting thread so that you can see but you will use a coordinated thread. So even if you're not perfect, no one will be able to tell. Okay, so now the bottom of your lining is also secured to the zip. So we are getting towards the end of making our dress and it's looking very dress-like. So for view A, the next step is to finish the armholes. So the first thing that we're going to do is pin them wrong sides together. So just as you will be wearing the dress. So this is unusual, you know, we almost always pin things right sides together. But for once, just for a change, you're gonna be pinning them wrong sides together. And we're going to be using a bias facing to finish them. Um, I will show you there are two ways to finish, to do the bias facing. The one um, does not involve hand sewing. <laughs> and you will see um, stitching on the outside. The other does involve hand sewing and will give you a clean finish. So if you want a look that's the same at the armholes as it is at the neckline, then some hand sewing is required. But I'll show you that when we get to it. So 
I've pinned around that armhole. And now I'm just going to sew at about um, a one eight inch seam allowance, or rather just close to the edge. It needs to be less than a quarter of an inch from the edge is the tricky thing. Um, a one eight seam allowance all around just to connect those two pieces. So now I'm simply going to sew this in a circle. Um, in some ways, the easiest thing I'm gonna show you is actually, we're keeping it right sides out, but we're going to sew on the inside of the armhole. And it's a little bit easier to not be going through lots of layers. So, I'm gonna go around. And just keep on going around. The only risk with, um, Sewing really close to the edge is making sure that you catch both the coat, both the layers. But you can always go back and check that later and redo it. There we go, those are now attached all the way around and now I'm just gonna do it for the other side. Okay, so here is our Elmley with the armholes basted together. And now what we're going to do is finish those armholes with a bias facing. So you're gonna have two strips that have been cut on the bias, which means at a 45 degree angle to the grain. And the first thing you're going to do is bring the short ends of one of them together, right sides together, sew across the end at a half inch seam allowance. And then we're going to do some pressing. So I'm going to move the dress for a second and get my ham. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just going to open up the seam allowances here. Now, the next thing we need to do is, is, is turn one side over by quarter of an inch. And this is another opportunity where, or another instance where sewing that line first is really helpful because you can do it more accurately and also it helps it fold. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I have now sewn this quarter inch marking round and now it makes it very easy to press it to the wrong side because I simply follow the stitching. This is going to be on the inside of the dress anyway, but if for any reason, it's visible after you sew it, no problem. You can just rip the stitches out using your seam ripper. Okay, so now we have our band, one side pressed to the inside. So now we are going to pin it to the dress, so um, it doesn't matter which armhole, they can both, they'll both be fine. We want to have the bottom seam here at the underarm. So I'm gonna just put this at a slight angle so you can see a bit better. So we want to pin it right sides together. So the right side of the band is this side. And so I'm gonna begin by pinning the seam in the band to the armhole here. And we're going to sew through all the layers. If you're thinking, hmm, is there, isn't there a way to like, this could be slightly, you know, slightly easier and clean finish like the neckline. The answer is there are some ways, but they are pretty advanced. So what we did is we came up with an approach that works really nicely for beginners and it will give you some really, really nice options. And it's about 80% simpler. But in the future, if you want to do like a fully enclosed, um, arm side in the same way as the neckline, there are techniques to do that too. So this piece, this facing has been um, created to exactly fit the armhole. So you shouldn't theoretically have a problem there. Unless you sewed across the end at the wrong, at the wrong seam allowance. That's the only thing that could throw it. Okay, and we're going all the way around. So, 
Now we are going to sew around at a quarter inch shimalas here. So you're not going to hit here, you're just going a quarter inch shimalas all the way around. Okay, so now we want to sew around this. So you want to make sure you're only sewing through one layer at a time. And then quarter of an inch on my machine basically aligns with the edge of the foot. So you just have to keep on repositioning the dress as you go around. Okay, so there you go. It's sewn all the way around. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we can do right here at the sewing machine. So we're now gonna understitch the bias facing. So what we do is we flip it up, but we're not gonna fold this over. We're just gonna fold it up. And then we're gonna sew on the bias side. So ignore the stitching. This is from the stay stitching. Um, we are going to sew just on the bias side, making sure that it's going through this seam allowance too. So if you want, you can flip this outer layer up just to make sure you don't catch it, but ultimately it needs to end up folded back. So if you do flip it up, don't do it too aggressively. So I'm spreading it out and I'm gonna move my needle to the side, which is my approach on my machine. And then I'm gonna go around. Again, just ignore the stay stitching line. We're gonna take that out later. So it's getting a bit confusing looking at it with the stay stitching, but let me just clean this up. So we now have the bias flipped over and this under stitching done. I'm gonna take out this line now so that it doesn't confuse you. That's the stay stitching. Okay, back to the iron. Okay, so on this armhole, we now have the under stitched bias. So now we're gonna turn the whole dress inside out and we are gonna do the final fold to the inside. So. It's useful to do this over a ham because it's curved, although we're not going to cut into anything. And um, you basically fold it this way. So you fold it over. You wanna make sure this outer lip is still folded over. That's the first one that you, that you ironed before we sewn. And you want to make sure that it's ever so slightly rolled to the inside so that you can't see the um, bias tape on the outside. Now you actually have a choice. This bias, you can make it out of the outer fabric like I'm doing. And the benefit to that is that um, it minima, you know, even if this shows on the wrong side a little bit, like it's the same color and it's fine. Or if you want to have more of the look of a traditional lining, you can make, you can use the lining fabric instead. So in this case, you could use the green if that's what the look you wanted. Okay, so I'm just, I don't try and do this without undoing what I've already done. It is kind of bulky. Um, because I'm using such two thick fabrics, basically, it's a little bit bulkier than it will be for you because you will use a thinner lining fabric. I would definitely never suggest using quilting cotton for the lining. So this is bulkier than it's gonna be for you. Okay, I'm gonna continue going around. You have to do it in sections. And because the bias tape is cut on the bias, it means that it molds around curves reasonably easily. Sometimes, you know, you need to encourage it with your fingers a little bit, but that's fine.
Now in the instructions, I tell you to do the pinning from the right side and that is ideal. But what you'll see is that if you pin it from the wrong side, which is what I'm doing now, it's a bit easier when you're doing the initial pinning and you can still take the pins out without problem. Okay, and then I just got my final section. Now the inner piece flips up here a bit, so I'm gonna turn that under. Now, even though I pinned from the wrong side, it is a good idea to sew from the right side. So I'm gonna turn this inside out, being very careful with the pins. The reason that it's good to top stitch from the outside is twofold. The first is that on a sewing machine, it's the top thread, the needle thread, that has a better um, stitch quality than the bobbin thread on almost all sewing machines. So you will actually get like a neater, more even, flatter looking edge by um, going from the right side. In addition, you can sew an even distance from here. So even if your bias tape is a little bit wobbly on the inside, which face it, many of us, many of us have slightly wobbly bias tape on the inside. You have to pay a lot of attention for that to be perfect. But on the outside, you can sew a perfect distance from the edge regardless. It doesn't really matter. As long as you catch your bias tape, if there's a little bit of extra bias tape in the middle, in the inside, it doesn't matter. So I recommend uh, top stitching from the outside. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so now I'm gonna top stitch this. Now, if you have a free arm on your machine, which does this, this is a good time to engage it. So you take this piece off and what it lets you do is put the loop of the armhole around. And this is really, really nice for things like top stitch and getting them really even. So I'm gonna start at the underarm because the beginning and end of seams, if there's ever gonna be a problem, that tends to be where it is. Oh no, something's happening here. Um, so I am gonna start at the underarm and go around from there, being as careful as I can to go at the half inch. Or just, sorry, I should say just under half an inch because what you want to do is you want to catch the bias tape on the inside. So I'm feeling underneath to make sure the bias tape is flat. Okay, and then cut these pieces off. And there we have a top stitch armhole. Okay, so I've top stitched around here and I'm just gonna give it a final press. Okay, so, this is the approach which is the easiest and the quickest, but you will get this visible top stitching. There is an alternative, which is to slip stitch the edge instead. So in that case, what you would do is hand sew, and the same as I showed you for the gap in the lining, you would take a little pinch of the lining only, so not the outside, so this is the reason that it doesn't show on the outside. A little nip of the lining, then the edge of the bias tape, and go backwards and forwards all the way around. It takes a while, but if you are doing um, so a slightly more like fancy version, then it's well worth your time. So now let's jump over to view B and how we finish the arm size here. So as you can see, the lining and the main aren't connected. They are at the neckline, but not here. And we already um, folded over our seam allowance of the lining to give us a nice edge. So what we're gonna do now the seam allowance of the um, sleeve is pushed towards the body. We are going to overlap the lining with that seam allowance. So we're gonna bring the fold on the edge of the lining up to the stitching line here. And we are now going to hand slip stitch the edge to the seam allowance, which what it means is that you're not gonna see it 
on the outside. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I have pinned the um, folded over lining to the dress, just to note I'm not pinning through the layers, I'm just pinning it to the seam allowance. And you can see the seam allowance there, it's ending, that's the seam. And now I'm going to slip stitch it. So I'm going to start by coming in through behind the lining and then I'm gonna push the tail there. And basically the same as what I was showing you before for the gap in the lining. So I'm gonna take a little nip from the seam allowance. So I'm going just inside that stitching line. And then I'm gonna take a little nip from the lining and I'm gonna pull it up. Now I'm gonna go straight across from the lining and take a little nip from the seam allowance again, and then back over to the lining. I'm doing it probably just under a quarter of an inch each time I move. Um, the closer together you do it, the stronger the seam will be. A uh, quarter of an inch tends to work for me, but you do you. Yeah, and just keep on going around. And so what you can see is you get like a clean join there and nothing will be visible on the outside. I will say this is a task. It's good to do like watching TV, listening to a podcast. It takes a while. Um, but especially if you are using hand sewing techniques in other places in the garment, it's a nice one to just be consistent. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue all the way around like that. Okay, so that lining is now sealed to the seam allowance all the way around, nice and flat, looking good. So the next stage is to hem this sleeve. So it's a pretty basic hem. We are going to turn it to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch, and then we're gonna turn it over again. So if you want, you can do my little trick of sewing first. Um, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna eyeball it this time, but you can use um, a ruler or a seam gauge to make sure you're doing exactly a quarter of an inch all the way around. But yes, this is another good one for my just sew a line on your sewing machine. I'd say the difference is, is that quite a few of my recommendations for just sew a line on your sewing machine, um, if you do have visible stitching, it ends up on the inside, so you don't have to do anything about it. This one, the stitching would be visible on the edge, so you would need to either do it very, very accurately or you would need to remove that stitching at the end. Oh, either works. So I've nearly gone all the way around. Okay, so now I'm going to fold it again by a quarter of an inch. And the nice thing is this time I have a guide because I'm just flipping it over the edge of here. So flip. So this is a great use for wonder tape now um, for securing down the hem all the way around because we're gonna sew it from the right side. Um, or you can pin. I'm gonna put the pins in from the right side. Slightly easier to take out. Okay. Gonna keep on going around. Just trying to get this taut. There we go. And again. And the last bit. Okay, 
So now we are going to top stitch this hem. Okay, so I top stitch from the right side all around the sleeve. So now I just need to repeat sewing on the lining and doing the um, hemming of the sleeve on the other side. Okay, back to view A. So the very final step, I am gonna show you how to do the hemming. Now, because we have two separate layers, the lining and the shell, we are going to actually hem them separately. Now, depending on the kind of um, garment you make, you may end up making a garment at some point where you actually um, finish them together. But in our case, we're doing them separately. So the first thing you want to do is just pull the lining out and just pull the shell away so that you're not getting any interference from there. So here is the shell lining, sorry, the lining. I'm just gonna give it a quick press at the bottom there so that it is nice and flat. And also I'm going to just even out, there was a little, it was a little bit off at the bottom here. I'm gonna just even that out so that won't be visible. Okay, so for the lining, we are simply going to turn it under a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch again, and then we're going to top stitch it all the way around. So same thing as before, same thing as the view B sleeves. So turn it to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. Then turn it again by another quarter of an inch. Continue that all the way around. Then I'm gonna pin in place. So I'm gonna do that the whole way around and then I'm going to top stitch the whole thing from the right side. Okay, so I top stitched the lining all the way around. So now we're gonna do the shell. So for this, we can literally just flip the whole thing over to the other end and here we have the shell hem. So they're far away from each other. You don't even need to worry about them getting in the way. So for this one, we are gonna cut, turn it over first by a quarter of an inch and then by three quarters of an inch. Um, the lining itself is actually shorter, which is why it's not gonna show from the right side. So the first, the first turn is a quarter of an inch. And then the second is three quarters. So I'm gonna get my ruler to check here. To my mind, that's about three quarters. There we go, that's three quarters. So. Now, of course, the other thing you can do is you can theoretically hem this whatever length you want. So, um, you could certainly try the dress on at this point before hemming it and then just check if this is the hem length you want. And if you want it shorter, um, you can certainly make it shorter very easily just by turning up the hem more. Um, if you want it longer, you're obviously a little limited in that, but you could turn it up twice by a quarter, basically make it half an inch longer. So I'm going to go all the way around and do that. And then I'm going to top stitch the same way that I did for the lining. Okay, so I top stitched the hem and we are basically done. So let's turn this whole baby the right side out. And that's it, you are done. You have made a beautiful sheath dress, whether you made view A with the clean finished neckline and the bias arm binding, or view B with the flutter sleeves. We have the lovely hem down here with the separate shell and lining. Um, and I should have mentioned, if you want, again, you can slip stitch this instead of top stitching. So if you really want a really smooth result on the outside, that's another option for you. So that's it. You now know how to sew an Elmley sheath dress. So where do you go from here? Well, there's all kinds of fun things you can do now that you know how to make the Elmley. The first thing I'd encourage you to do is experiment with different types of fabric. The Elmley is really versatile in the kind of fabrics you can use, but you can really achieve very different looks, whether that's more of a day look, whether it's the floaty sleeves or more structured if you use a heavier fabric, all the way up to making like very, very fancy versions. 
The second thing that's really easy to do on the Alni is change the neckline. Now you might think this sounds very difficult, but it's much easier than you might think because of the way that the neckline is finished with the clean finishing. It basically means that as long as the shell and the lining pieces are the same, you can do really whatever you want. There are a few guidelines. So for instance, um, you want to make sure that your neckline is symmetrical because we're cutting it on the half. Um, but apart from that, you can kind of do almost whatever you want. So this is the current neckline of the Elmley. Let's say you still want a round neckline, but you want it to be lower, no problem. So measure down on your piece how much lower you want it to be. Remember that there's still the seam allowance. So whatever you draw here, it's gonna be actually half an inch lower than that. So let's say you want it to go to here. Now, the one thing that's important is that the line has to enter at a right angle to here. If it doesn't, you will create a little V even if you don't want one. So uh, you wanna start by just making a small horizontal line so that you know that you're gonna meet there correctly. And then if you have one, a curved ruler like this is really helpful. Um, I usually move it around a bunch, but let's say I wanted to do this one. I would, actually, I'm just gonna turn it around so it's easier because I'm right-handed. So I just started my curve there. And let's say I want to end it, you know, just a little bit further out than the current one. There you go. So lowering the neckline is literally as easy as that. You then wanna make sure if you did bring it in here, you would need to bring it in by the same amount on the back piece. And then you also need to transfer the same amount of change to the lining piece. So you wanna put the same line on the lining piece. And then for the lining piece, you want to trim another small amount, like we're talking about an eighth of an inch off the edge here. So you wanna make the lining neckline about an eighth of an inch smaller than the outside, because that helps the lining roll to the inside. Um, if you don't do that, you'll probably be fine, but it's like a little trick to make your garment look even better. Now, what about if you want to do a V-neck? It's actually even easier than this. Literally, you're just gonna draw a straight line. So if you want, you can also fill this in. So your V-neck could be like this, in which case add some paper here first, but just for the sake of making it easy here, I could do this and you would just simply cut it off there, do the same on the lining, and all of a sudden you have a V-neck Elmley. So people tend to think that changing necklines is gonna be difficult, but it's actually really, really easy. The other thing you can do to change your Elmley is change the length. So you can make it shorter, so you can make it more into like a sort of a pinafore type dress that's shorter that you wear with like opaque tights. You can also make it a bit longer. One thing to bear in mind, there's only so much longer you can make it before you're gonna to have to make other adaptations to be able to walk. Because if you keep taking a slimline skirt and go down and down and down and down and down, it doesn't give you enough room for walking. In that case, you need to add like a slit up the back or something like that. So it's a little bit more advanced, but it is doable. The other thing you can now do is make other patterns because you actually have many, many, many of the core skills required to make a dress and especially even a line dress. My number one recommendation for you is our most popular pattern at Cashmere, which is the Upton Dress and Skirt Mix and Match Pack. So what this is, is a fit and flare dress, which has all of these different pieces that you can mix and match together. So there are, there's a darted bodice that's very similar to the one you've just made, but there's also princess seams, which is a great next step for learning. There are different sleeve lengths. There are different types of skirts. There are, you can put the skirts with the bodices to make dresses, or you can just make them as skirts. And you already have like 99% of the skills required to make our number one most popular pattern, which has over 400 different combinations of things that you can make. So you can check it out at the link below and it's a whole new world of exciting sewing. Next up, a good next step is learning how to fit. So sewing your clothes is a great thing, but learning to fit them to your body is a superpower. So for that, I recommend my first book, Ahead of the Curve. Ahead of the Curve is all about how to fit sewing patterns to fit your curves really beautifully. There is very, very straightforward tuition on how to do this, including full color photos on curvy people showing what an issue looks like and then what it looks like when it's been fixed. 
There is so much kind of hand-holding and helping you through. There's lots of like inspirational confidence boosting content in there. And there are five sewing patterns. And the cool thing is all five of them are patterns you can already make because you have the skills from knowing how to make the Elmi dress. So go to cashmeret.com forward slash AOTC to have a look. And finally, if you are learning to sew, I highly recommend you sign up for our newsletter at cashmeret.com forward slash learn to sew newsletter. We will send you tips and tricks for beginners, special offers, and all kinds of things to help you feel confident and excited about sewing a wardrobe that actually fits. If you are really getting the sewing bug, my number one recommendation is to join the Cashmere Club. So the Cashmere Club is a group of over four and a half thousand sewists from all around the world who get together every month to sew a brand new Cashmere pattern that you get as part of your membership. So we all sew an amazing pattern, but in addition, you will get masterclasses from me that are very similar to the sew along that you got today, but on all kinds of different fitting topics. There are also live events. We have a private members forum that's always so active with lots of people encouraging each other and helping each other out on their sewing journey. There are discounts, there are exciting, like extra bonus things all the time. It's really, really lots of fun. So if you want to join, there are both monthly options and yearly options. It's amazing value for what you get from Cashmere and it's just a whole lot of fun. So go to cashmere.com forward slash club to learn more.